Welcome back everyone, James here, J-Man Travels. Today is a super exciting day, I'm so stoked. My plane just pulled up. Today I'm flying on Air France from San Francisco to Lisbon, Portugal with a stop in Paris. This is a big step because it's been almost two years since I've flown international, since I've flown to Europe. I've been to Mexico a couple times. Mexico hasn't really cared about COVID and everything else, but this is really big to be able to go to Europe. So I'm so excited. One of my friends told me, hey, I've got a place in Portugal. Let's go hang out for a few days. So I, Jim, I, I can't even believe this is happening. The plane just pulled up. I got so excited. So yeah, I'm sure it's going to be a good flight. I've been in Air France once before in business. This time I'm back in economy, but it should be a good one. It was only about $600 round trip from San Francisco to Lisbon, so it's pretty good fare and I'm really excited, so let's go ahead and see how uh, Air France is and let's go ahead and check out the lounge first. Luckily with my Delta Platinum status, Sky Team Elite Plus, that gets me access when I'm on international tickets. So let's go ahead and check out the lounge and then let's go get on this flight. I'm so excited. <laughs> In San Francisco's international terminal, a lot of the lounges are all located on one end of the terminal and Emirates and British Airways are on the other side, but right here, they're all kind of grouped together. As you can see, this is the lounge for Air France and KLM, however, any SkyTeam Elite passenger on an international SkyTeam flight will be allowed into the lounge. There was a good amount of seating, however, with priority pass access, it was a little limited as things got closer to the flight but there were still wonderful views of the airplanes outside the windows, and there were two buffet areas. This is the first one with mostly just coffee, juice, water, stuff like that. And on the other side of the wall, we'll show you the rest of the food. I wish the lounge was closer up to the windows so I can get better views of the planes. However, that walkway in front of us was to allow passengers to walk between the international terminal and the rest of the airport. Eventually, San Francisco will be completely connected by walkways, so you won't have to go in and out of security. This lounge was very well stacked with food. There was a little fruit and salad bar here on the left, a little station for some water, and of course, my favorite part, the alcohol bar. There were some great wines to pick from. There's even a really nice brute, and there's also another champagne they brought out later, as well as the hard alcohol options were really nice. It wasn't the cheap stuff, that's for sure. I absolutely loved it. There were some other snack options over here. You had your pickles, and you had some sandwiches, and some breads, and other French cuisine. Overall, the lounge food was really, really fantastic. I sat here for about four hours, and it was a really nice place to be. This is my spot here, of course, with the window view. And as soon as I saw that 777 show up, I knew I had to finish my drink real quick and head on the plane. Today's flight was pretty full. It was nice to see the boarding area with lots of people standing there, and it was nice to see a plane, an international plane especially, that was full. This definitely goes to show that people are willing and ready to travel, so as soon as borders open and as soon as people get vaccinated, people are ready to go. This Air Force 707 had the Lac Premier first class cabin in it. However, we did not get to board and walk past that cabin. We started with the business class cabin, which is set up in a 1 2 1 configuration. Some planes, such as the A330, are set up in a 2 2 2 configuration. However, all the 777s are set up in a 1 2 1 for business class. After business class, we have Economy section, which is set up in a 242 setup. Now, I have flown this product before, and it was really quite nice. I actually kind of missed the legroom of this. As you can see, my economy seat after that did not have the most legroom because Air France does not have economy plus seating or extra legroom seating for economy. So it was just a standard economy. However, there was no one in the seat in the middle, so that did make up for the fact that there was a lack of legroom. I was able to move my feet over to the middle, and so was the lady next to me, and it worked out okay. Waiting for me on my seat was a pair of headphones, a blanket, and a nice little pillow to enjoy for the flight. 
personally, I never use the headphones they provide because I don't find the quality to be that good. In fact, I don't even think I tried these ones. I just have my nice Sennheiser noise cancelling headphones. And something I never really appreciated until this flight was the noise cancelling feature because, of course, as I would have it, there was a crying baby in front of me. But noise cancelling headphones in, I didn't hear a thing. It was wonderful. This is so cool, ready? That's right, this plane had a forward-facing camera. This is so cool. This is something that so many European airlines and other airlines do. I have no idea why we don't do this in the US, but I absolutely love the view from the front. It was so cool to have. After I geeked out about the forward-facing camera, I attached my GoPro to the window and got ready for takeoff. After takeoff, I did get some really cool footage of the wildfires happening in California. It's really crazy how far they've burned and how much of even Colorado, where I'm from, has gotten covered up with smoke. One thing I was really not impressed with was the legroom. It was kind of a tight fit, especially for someone of my height. It didn't really work too well. But luckily, with that seat next to me being open, I kind of was able to put my legs over there, and so was the other lady in the aisle, and we kind of made up for it. But overall, the legroom was not impressive at all. The seat, however, did have a nice full-size tray table on it, as well as a little drink holder, so you can have your tray table folded up and still put a drink in the cup holder. I found that to be pretty cool. Every seat did come with in-seat power, so you could charge your devices, and it was a universal plug, so no matter where you were from, they would fit. That's always a really nice feature. In addition to movies, there was TV, music, a little wellness section which would show you through some exercises you can do while you're in your seat to help keep the blood flow going. You of course had the My Flight section where you can track the flight and see the live map, which is pretty much where I spend all my time if I'm not watching a movie. I've got that map moving to see where we're at and I absolutely love that. No matter what aircraft I'm on, that's always my favorite menu. Um, but there's plenty of other things. You can see your meal, you can see all kinds of things. It really was a good in-flight entertainment system. I really did enjoy it. After we got to cruise, the crew came around and handed out some extra sanitary items, including a wipe, some gel, and of course, a mask. In fact, I find these masks nice because you can put the paper ones on throughout the flight, they get all gross and funky whatever, just take them off at the end, put your own mask back on, and you're good to go. They also came around with a nice wet cloth that I also used to wipe off my face at the end of the flight. It was quite nice. After, uh... After they came around with sanitary items, we got to pick our meals. I went for the chicken option. It also came with rice, bread, uh, some cheese, and a little plastic container of water. In fact, I found it really interesting that Air France is trying to be more sustainable and renewable, as all the silverware that they used were also made out of wood. That way you don't have as many non-reusable plastics. I found that really, really nice. One other thing that I really like about Air France and economy is that they do come around with champagne. Some other airlines that I've been on do not have champagne. When I flew KLM home, there was none in economy, or Virgin, none in economy, but Air France, they do provide an economy, which is absolutely fantastic. Overall, I found this meal to be quite wonderful. I was actually pretty full from eating in the lounge, but I still had plenty of room for this food. It was great flavor, great taste. I really enjoyed it. And of course, the big smile on my face when I have champagne in economy. It truly is delightful. It's something many airlines don't have. This was a good little treat. After the meal was over, they did come around with something that is also very French, an after-meal digestive. In this case, we had cognac. It was really nice, however, the paper cup I wasn't a big fan of, so I just finished my champagne and poured it in there. I thought that was a more appropriate cup for cognac than paper. A little cognac was the perfect way to end the meal. In fact, all of these French things and French traditions I was taking part in on the plane really made me miss France. In fact, I was kind of sad that I was just flying through and I didn't get to spend any time because I do really like France. It's one of my favorite countries I've ever been to. 
As the sun was going down, I got some beautiful footage of the sunset. However, because we were so far north on our path, the sun never really went all the way down. So shortly after this, I was told to close my window so that way the cabin would be nice and dark, and that way everyone on the plane could get some sleep. So once everyone started to go to sleep, I decided to hop out of my seat and go check out the back. If you're someone like me who doesn't sleep on the plane, then you know the back is where all the insomniacs get to hang out overnight. Fortunately, they had a little drink station set up where you can get more water and soda and some other things. We could also ask the flight attendants if we wanted more champagne or more of something else like that. On the other side of the plane, they had a little snack station set up where you had a bunch of different little chips and cookies and things you could grab and take back to your seat to eat. In fact, I brought some of these home because these little chips were really, really good. After checking out the little snack station in the back, I grabbed some more water and headed back to my seat. One of the things I found super important on these long flights is to drink lots of water because the more water you can drink, the better off you are and the better you feel the next day and the less jet lag you have. So I always drink plenty of water. After I got back to my seat, I was able to get about 20 minutes of sleep if I was lucky. So I pretty much just sat there and played on my phone, watched the IFE and did some things like that. However, because we had all the shades closed, you couldn't really see anything and the plane was totally blacked out. So we'll go ahead and move on to what we got for the next day for breakfast right before landing. As the sun came up and everyone started to wake up, the crew came around and handed out these little bags which had some breakfast pastries in them, as well as a warm cheese sandwich. That's right, it was a sandwich with just cheese. More on that in a second. Inside the bag, there was a little sandwich that came pre-made, as well as a little cup of fruit and some yogurt and some jam. It really just kind of reminded me of like a high school lunch, like something you pack up and take with you. It was nothing spectacular really, nothing really right home about, but it was substance, which after a long flight, you do need to eat something. Now, more about the sandwich. While I do appreciate the fact that we had a hot part of our meal, it was only a cheese sandwich. It was just a piece of cheese on some bread, and in fact, the bread was a little stale. It, it really wasn't that good, but again, it was something to eat. I was a lot more impressed with the dinner service than the breakfast service. I found the food at breakfast to be very standard. Now, when I flew Delta a couple years ago over to Europe, there was no hot meal for breakfast when we arrived. So I do have to say that that is one little step up, but it is just a piece of cheese on bread, so it's not a big step up. For me, one of the saddest parts of the flight is the last meal, because that means everything is coming to an end. However, that's also where the adventure begins. I was very excited to be going to Portugal. Uh, I had a friend over there who had a place for us to stay and said, hey, if you can come, join us. So I was like, heck yeah. So I was really excited to be going to Portugal, but I was very sad that I wasn't able to spend any time in France. I'm sure I'll be on my way back to France very soon. As always, if you want to see the full takeoff and landing video, I post all of these to my channel. In fact, I kind of give everyone a little sneak preview of what's happening because if I'm doing a flight review, I try and post the takeoff and landing videos right before I do the flight review. So go ahead and check out my channel if you want to see the full videos. And if you subscribe and hit the notification bell, it'll kind of give you an idea of what trips I have coming up. Well, made it through customs. It took a little bit, there was a long line. But uh, overall, let's talk about that 777. It's really exciting to be on my first ever 777-300ER. I've done the 200LR with Delta on their retirement flight and I did the 200ER with American. So it's cool to do the 300, it's a big plane. It's crazy how much business class and La Première, the first class, they put on that plane and all the economy behind it. Um, you can tell the plane's getting a little old, but overall, it's a really nice plane. The seats were decent. I would say the legroom wasn't the best. Um, I'm gonna be trying KLM on the way home in about a week. So if you guys wanna see that video, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you know when that one comes out. Um, I'm gonna be interested to see though how KLM is because they have a extra legroom economy section, unlike Air France. They just have the premium economy, which is a great option. I've actually flown that a couple years ago. But if you're looking for something a little bit cheaper, there's not really any option. It's kind of no legroom or you have to spend a lot more money. But the uh, meals on the flight were really good. Um, the breakfast was okay. When I flew to France last year with Delta, our breakfast was just like a cold muffin. So having a little warm sandwich is nice. It wasn't the best sandwich, but it was still nice to have. So overall, it was a great flight. Um, I'm heading on to Lisbon now. I'm actually really sad that I can't stay in France. Absolutely love it here in France. 
but uh, I'm gonna enjoy my time and gonna enjoy my time in the lounge that I get access to because of my Delta Platinum status and uh, I'm gonna be going on to Portugal but let me know have you flown Air France and economy have you flown the 777 is there another plane that's better should I try it out let me know down in the comments below thank you so much for watching I really appreciate it don't forget to subscribe so you can see the KLM review when that comes out and until then, see you guys in the next video.